and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing, well actually we're going to be comparing the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 to the Vortex Strike Eagle 5-25x56. So both of these optics are big feature, are really feature rich optics that have a pretty moderate price tag attached to them. So let's just start going over the features that both of these optics have in common. So they both have a wide objective. Well, the Arkin has a 50, the Vortex has a 56. They both have a 34 millimeter tube. They both have a ton of internal adjustment. Um, they both have zero stops and they both have wide magnification ranges and good and long eye relief, not to mention um, illumination. So, so they're pretty much your optics that you're gonna be looking at if you're gonna look into getting into PRS. So their price tag varies quite a bit. For example, the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 624 by 50 retails, which is also their MSRP, $450 US. Now, whereas the Strike Eagle uh, retails for $700 US. So there is a pretty big price gap between the two. But you'll be pretty surprised that there's actually a lot of similarities between the two. So the, let's just start off with the glass quality. So take a look at the glass. This is the Arkin at 400 meters. As you can see, that looks really nice and really sharp. Uh, the Arkin has HD glass, so high density, whereas the Vortex Strike Eagle has uh, ED glass, or extra low dispersion. So in theory, that would mean that the Strike Eagle has a better glass. Now in this situation, the Strike Eagle does obviously have a little bit better glass, and I mean, that you can see for yourselves. Also, the Strike Eagle has brighter glass, which is something I've noticed, even shooting long range, that the Arkin has slightly darker tint to the glass. So for the glass, we're gonna give the point to the Vortex Strike Eagle. Next, we have the eye relief. So the Vortex advertises 3.7 inches of eye relief, and the Arkin advertises 3.5. So these numbers do matter, but in this regards, we're always looking at how forgiving the eye box is, uh, what it's like at the highest, what it's like at the lowest. Now in this situation for the eye box, I would say the Strike Eagle has a more forgiving eye box at the highest magnification, because that's typically where it gets tighter. Also, the fast focus eyepieces in the Vortex are also a bit smoother than the one in the Arkin. Although both of them, I would consider them to be both very smooth, but just the Vortex, just slightly more so, and they, neither of them have any slop. So for the eye relief, we are gonna give the point to the Vortex in this scenario. Next, we have the focus parallax. So in the Vortex Strike Eagle, I mean, this dial is super stiff. I mean, especially when it's cold outside, because we do a lot of like cold weather shooting in like minus five, minus 10 Celsius. And I mean, this thing is stiff, even when it's like, well, even when I'm indoors, this thing is actually really stiff. That's one thing I've noticed on this. Now on the Arkin, it's actually super smooth. This is about as smooth as you'll see in a more premium optic or the best of a batch of a more entry level optic. So it could be either case. Now in this situation, we're gonna grade them as, as we have them. Also, the numbers on the Arkin do match the distance indicated, whereas on the Vortex Strike Eagle, they do not. So in that aspect, I would arguably easily give the point to the Arkin by far. Next, we have the field of view. So this is an often overlooked part of, well, choosing your PRS rifle scope. So on the Vortex, it has, at the lowest magnification, it has 24 feet in diameter at, at like 100 yards in distance, whereas the Arkin has 20.88. Now, the lowest usually isn't the most important one because, I mean, it, it's really wide regardless and you'll be able to find your target 100% of the time at your lowest magnification. What really matters is the highest magnification, how wide your field, how wide your field of view is. Now, on the Vortex, it's 5.2, whereas on the Arkin, it's 5.22 which, I mean, we're arguing here by decimals, so in this aspect, I would arguably say they're equal in that aspect. But still, the Vortex has a wider field of view at the lowest magnification. So in this scenario, you're really splitting hairs. I wouldn't base your decision on strictly this, but for the points, we are gonna give the point to the Vortex. Next, we have the turrets. So this is where we have the meat and potatoes of pretty much most optics reviews. So. The Vortex, both of these optics have a ton of internal adjustments, so keep that in mind. These are feature rich, these have everything you want. Now there are a few differences such as the Vortex, they're a little bit smaller, but they are lockable. For example, you just push this down and they lock, you lift them up and they turn. 
Um, they both have a ton of internal adjustment. So the Vortex has 120 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. The zero stop limits it to 47 MOAs worth of internal adjustment until it hits the zero stop. So in mils, that would be like 13.4 mils, which is more than enough to get you, well, on most people beyond 1,000 meters. For example, myself with my 6.5 Creedmoor, that would be more than enough. I can, I think, go at, I think at 35 MOA on my 308, I'm at 820 meters. So more than enough to get you where you need to go. But remember, if you want to do extreme long range shooting, then yes, 47 MOA might be slightly limited. Whereas the Arkin does not limit you to how much internal adjustment because it's a simple set screw that just falls down onto its shelf. So you could use the full 32 mils of internal adjustment. So if you want to do the comparison, you just do 32 mils times 3.5 to get how many MOA that is. So, so in this comparison, we are kind of comparing them as if they're both on the same price, but we do have to understand that this is a few hundred dollars more. Now we did the tracking on both of these units and they are they both track very, very well. Now as forms of turrets, you know, we can't dismantle these optics to see what they're actually made of. I would like to do so, but it's not something we can do for this test. Now have a look at these turrets on the Arkin. They are very positive. They are very, very audible. So now on the Vortex, they're very positive and very audible as well. Now here, we're probably just splitting hairs because they're both very positive and I, I'm having difficulties to say which one I think is actually more positive or more audible. So I'm not really gonna base my uh, evaluation on which is more positive, which is more audible. We're gonna base it on how much internal adjustment you can use with the zero stop installed. In this aspect, I would arguably give the point to the Arkin because you can use the full adjustment range with the zero stop. Whereas the Vortex, the rev stop limits you to two full revolutions and that's it. Now let's talk about the illumination. So in the Arkin, the illumination is really only the center portion that actually gets illuminated. Now it has an off function between each illumination setting, which is pretty much what you see in the more expensive optics. That is not the case with the Vortex. So it is the full reticle that's illuminated and you do not have an off function between each illumination setting. It goes up in gradings of up to 11 and there's an off between, well, the 11th and the first. Whereas on the Arkin, you have an off between each setting and you have 10 illumination settings. Now, both of these are really nice and easy enough to turn. They both feel like they're pretty good quality. If I were to give a point to one or the other, I mean, again, we're here, we're splitting hairs. Hmm, I'd probably say the Vortex maybe, but I'm still not too sure on that. It seems very, very, very close in that regards. Also, if we look at the illumination itself, in the Arkin, the, the illumination often does a little bit of washout around what it's illuminating on the reticle. So that, that's a little bit of a flaw in my, in my opinion. So in that aspect, I give the point to the Vortex Strike Eagle. Next, we have the warranty. So both of these companies offer lifetime warranties. Now, Vortex is probably the most well-known um, and it's backed by a much, much larger company. Arkin is a much smaller company in comparison and Vortex just has an easier time meeting, well, uh, meeting the demand. So if you maybe had an issue with your Arkin, I don't know, maybe you dropped it or maybe it was defective by chance, um, you might have to wait a few weeks before you get a new one. Whereas, you know, the Vortex Strike Eagle, Vortex manufactures these obviously in larger quantities, so you can expect that you'll probably get a replacement one a bit sooner. Now, I can't speak as to um, in large quantities. I can only really speak to the two units I have here in front of me. And as far as both of these units go, they're both really good options. Obviously one's more expensive, but if you were on a budget, I would arguably say, you know what, just go the Arc, go with the Arkin. This thing is fabulous. Um, it's, it's obviously less expensive. The glass has a slightly darker tint to it, but maybe we brought this thing out to 750 meters and I could tell every hit on glass. I mean, the glass on the uh, Strike Eagle was a little bit better from what we've observed. It looks like it's a little bit brighter too. Um, but I mean, it, here we're talking a big difference in price and a rather negligible difference in, for, in terms of um, quality. Where I mean, although this Focus Parallax is, is ridiculously stiff. People have said it'll get looser, but I mean, I haven't put a ton of use to it, so maybe it's just still not broken in yet, but right from the factory, I mean, the Arkin was super, snoo super smooth, whereas the Vortex was super stiff, okay? Also, one thing to note is the fit and finish on both of these optics is really good. Obviously, other than the Focus Parallax, the magnification adjustment, really smooth, really nice. Same thing goes for the Arkin. I mean, this is really smooth. You don't really feel much friction at all, which is, I mean, you don't expect this nice of quality 
on something at this price. It's just unheard of. At this price, you should expect, well, A, no uh, zero stop, uh, probably about 70 MOAs with an internal adjustment. And the function should be fairly smooth and you should typically expect a little bit of friction in the magnification. So this is way beyond what the norm is. I mean, this is, even this, when the Strike Eagle came out, it was like, wow, everybody was jumping on it. You have tons of internal adjustment. I think it has 120 MOA. It's got a zero stop. I mean, it's got 56 millimeter objective, 34 millimeter tube. I mean, they pretty much need a 34 millimeter tube to house that much internal adjustment. It's got a really wide magnification range, long eye relief. I mean, this is the cat's meow. Also, the Arkin came out and, well, they're offering a ton of features as well at a much reduced cost. So, in terms of which one would I pick, if my budget is 450 to probably about 700, I'm jumping with the Arkin. The differences are negligible and it's really gonna come down to, well, Arkin is offering a ton at this price. Now, I mean, we haven't evaluated their uh, ED because this is their uh, Arkin SH4. They have the EP4, which at some point we're gonna review. I'd love to make a comparison with that with the Vortex Strike Eagle, which might be a bit fair comparison in, in terms of glass quality. But keep in mind, if you're looking to get into PRS and you know what, you have a slightly tighter budget, you know, the days of you have to spend twice the amount on the optic that you have on the rifle are way beyond gone. I mean, take this one, although it's, this is an exception. This is, Arkin is essentially the exception of the optics companies. They're offering way more than anybody else. Uh, you can compete and you can potentially win if you're a good shot and if you know you're dope. You could potentially do very well in a PRS competition with an optic like this. You don't need to spend $2,000. So, and that's my comparison of the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 6 to 24 by 50 to the Vortex Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56. So, if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe. We have a lot more videos coming. And thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.